this is a pervading, ongoing problem with legendary creatures in modern magic, in my opinion. I shouldn't say mummy, should I? Some of you are going to get excited about that. The most milk toast creature type around. Commander games take too long, and none of us like each other anyway. Gwyneth Paltrow's Jade Fanny Egg? Ward 2. In spite of a golden age, I'd rather lick a turd. Recently, someone asked me to return to the format of roasting the most popular commanders. And I thought I was old hat, I thought I'd done that before, but then I realised the first video for this was over three years ago. It was a tier list video, so in the interest of trying to make this at least mildly different to that old format, I'm not going to do it as a tier list today. If for some reason that bothers you, then just pretend it's a tier list. Pretend that all of them are in D tier for dog shit, because popular commanders are for losers. Now right off the bat, I am roasting your favourite commanders here, and the most favourite commanders across the internet, and thus I'm going to be a little bit unfair to them, if I'm honest. Most of the stuff I'm going to say is just going to be really mean about the commanders. Not people, but the commanders, and some players. Commander players deserve it anyway. My point is that if you can't take a little bit of heat then get out of the kitchen and close the video. Beyond that, three years is a long time in Magic the Gathering. In that time, Gorlos has been taken out behind the shed and shot in the back of the head. Wizards have continued to escalate the power creep of legendary creatures the and I've started to take some care in how I look. What the fuck? There is nothing like looking back at old videos. Videos that you put on the internet of yourself to induce an overwhelming sense of cringe and dread. It makes you realise just how fast you're ageing too. There's always a nice little dose of existential malaise. The original was filmed during the pandemic as well, so I wasn't legally allowed to go out and get my hair cut, lest Queen Lizzie burst through the window and go rots me with her own jewels. Which is further interesting because Queen Lizzie is dead now. The times they are are changing. So what I'll be doing today is talking about the top 20 most popular commanders on EDH rec that have changed significantly since I last did this, and I'm going to basically go through and tell you all why you should feel bad for playing them. There's an element of hipsterism here of me saying that I don't play the most popular commanders, although I think one of these might be built in my cupboard behind me, but I haven't touched it for a couple of years. Beyond that, it's meant to be in good sport and good humour so we can all laugh at ourselves for playing the normie shit. I'm going to go backwards, counting down from 20 to 1 to give it a bit of a, oh, I wonder who's number 1 at the moment. But before we jump in, it. Did you know I stream on Whatnot? There'll be a link in the description below to get yourself £10 off your first purchase. You can use the code PleasantKenobi at checkout. Whatnot is a live streaming website that allows you to buy things at auction. I also give away a load of stuff. Like I gave away a lot of Fallout boosters last week. This is me literally purchasing some Smash Bros cards from somebody because I was wondering what they were. You buy a sealed product and the streamer will open it for you. In my case, I will even sign cards. And then you receive it to your home to add to your collection. I even have a single shop on there. So if you're looking to buy just a signed land, for example, and the week after next I'll be putting a lot of flicker wisps up as well if you want to get one of my signature cards signed by me it helps to support the show and like I said if you use a £10 off you're just paying for shipping. In at number 20 is Arcades the Strategist. I like big butts and I cannot lie and Arcades is well it's super based. I hate to start off a roast but I cannot roast this commander this is the one that's getting off Borderline Scott Free. Only cool people play Arcades, and it may or may not be the one that I've got built. And that's not the reason I'm saying this. I just think Arcades is far less dumb than the rest of the shit on this list. I'll be honest, do a thing, draw a card is the most basic bitch language wizards can put on a card. It's the pumpkin spice latte of card design. It's the Taylor Swift of Magic the Gathering rules text. But it beats the hell out of a paragraph and a half of text that virtually says the same thing. The fact that this guy tends walls into the red zone is wonderful, and I think he's pretty cool. I love this card, even seven years on. It's at number 19 is a card that is basically a child, so it's trying to avoid me punching down at it, and I feel bad dunking on angel players, if I'm honest. It's like kicking your younger cousins. No matter how annoying they are, you are smarter and older and should know better. And that's how I feel about angel players. Whilst they're the creatures of hope, played most often by the unsuspecting casual with eyes full of bleary naivety, I still think they're kind of boring. And if your worst crime is being boring, I mean, that's not so bad compared to some of the absolute fucking disgusting shit on this list. DISGUSTING! This won't be the last time we hear about angels mentioned in our list too because casuals love the shit and prop them up. I'm still bitter that one of the few mana creators in the command zone for Mono White would pen me into the most milk toast creature type around, but it kind of fits. These are the iconic white creature after all. Liking white as the underdog and being a hipster like myself comes at a cost. We have to deal with the naive optimism of casuals playing shiny sparkling angels. God, let me be grumpy in peace. Okay, the first two were soft. We now get into the dumb shit. Corvold. He outlived his colleague Tulane, who landed in the same product five years ago. Corvold is still on the go, the default poster boy for Jund aristocrats. Meanwhile, Tulane is just like spitting in his grave, essentially. Corvold 
Torvald is a self-fulfilling card draw engine that both does the thing and rewards you for doing the thing. This is a pervading, ongoing problem with legendary creatures in modern magic, in my opinion. They just allow you to do the thing and guide you towards doing it and enable it as well. They basically hold your hand and say, don't worry, darling. Mummy Wizards has got you. I shouldn't say mummy, should I? Some of you are going to get excited about that. Okay, <clears throat> let me try again. Don't worry, darling. Daddy Hasbro has got you. I shouldn't say daddy either. Wizards thinks we're incapable of finding our own synergies, so they spoon feed it to us with designs like Corvald, who of course is an even bigger culprit of this nonsense as he plays so well with Wizards' other hand-holding technique, treasures. As more and more dumb treasure producers land into our laps, fixing our mana and ramping us for simply scratching our own unwashed arseholes, Corvald brings us a wealth of riches. A literal and metaphorical embarrassment of riches. Like that man with the limes, the average Corvald player has no fucking idea what to do with all these cards. Corvald is a capitalist, you see, leeching our time as a resource but still passing the turn with more than we will ever hope to achieve in our lifetimes. More cards in hand, more resources on board, and a shit-eating grin whilst the rest of us feel unfairly compensated for our time at the grand metaphorical table that is life. In short, eat the rich and fuck Corvold. And speaking of money-grabbing whores, it's Prosper, Tombbound. It's the only commander in the top 20 that actually makes treasures, which in itself is crime enough, if you ask me. But in my experience, Prosper is the probably ultimate commander for I didn't realise I was piling a combo deck as a casual... And I'm, I know I'm ragging on casuals here, don't worry, we'll get to you CDH players in a moment. But as the casual player follows the EDH rec top 100 cards to stick in a Prosper list, and before you know it, the thing turns that last so long, by the time they're finished, they're of drinking age. In many ways, Prosper having an end step trigger means that you can't really use him during your turn. But a second tr trigger that generates a treasure comes from not just only his own trigger that enables that. That's right, it's a legendary that does the thing and enables the thing. Anything else from Cascade to Discover to Impulsive Draw to doing your fucking taxes. Surprisingly, so many things you want to do anyway in the modern game of Magic utilises the Exile Zone as an easy shortcut area to facilitate new design. And thus, as more shit comes into Magic, Thus, we get more and more things that combo with Prosper. Prosper is the dredge of Commander, because for every set, dredge has a new toy. That's a reference that only boomers will get. If you're not a boomer and you get it, you're probably hanging around with the wrong crowd. Every set brings a new mechanic that triggers Prosper's bookkeeping and profiteering. Again, he may not be stealing your lands, but he is stealing your time. As the turns go long, and you look down at your nine-year-old Commander and wonder to yourself, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Wait a minute, this next one. How on earth is this dinosaur here? <laughs> it's Kalia. She's not a dinosaur, but she is the original boogie woman from the OG 2011 design for Commander Commanders. She was there when it all began, or at least it all began by wizard's measurements. Creating Commander design cards to fill up holes in play space, or in reality printing commanders that hold your hand, wipe your ass, and act like paint by numbers books. Carly is an example of this, signposting heavily on what you're meant to do with her. She asks the seriously intellectual question of, can you put high cost demons, angels, and dragons in your deck? It's an intellectual pursuit that only the biggest brain players can make. The funny thing is that she does win some brownie points for actually being a lot better than Riku of Two Reflections, which came out in the same year. The commander that real intellectuals who played red, blue, green, good stuff lists attach themselves to, thinking they want a higher plane of existence, only to get Master of Cruelty back to the fucking Stone Age. Either way, it's wild to me that Riku is a relic. He's just clambering around in the dust that settled whilst Kalia flies high, expensive nonsensical angel or demon for the latest set in tow. Esku is a five mana commander that can even be a super mana door, or it can be a plain up bridge that puts big shit into play straight out of your library. Oh wow, do you want me to hold your hand whilst you build the deck and just cram it full of the biggest shit you can? Fixing a big ship. It's really not a struggle for that little brain of yours to put a load of that crap into your deck. I think Esku is a cool card in a vacuum, but a boring card as a commander. Testament to the fact that a cool idea can look shitty when you have access to it all the time out of a special zone. I understand that playing good stuff is a kink for some people, but so is vomit play, and quite frankly I don't want that on my gaming table either. Please keep it to yourself. Oh look, another five color commander, how quaint and original. At least this big green giant with his thick biceps is five color through the commitment to the bit. The Shrine King, he enables the mean-tastic shrines of the olden days by creating creatureless shrine boys and girls, little tiny ones every time you play a shrine. Cool. His activated ability, however, is looking to reanimate any enchantment, which much like the average 30-year-old magic player wearing a band t-shirt to FNM, is Goshen Tai trying to desperately stay relevant. Wizards have explained in the past that uh, the Kamigawa cards from the original block were parasitic. What that meant was they were shit, but they were also shit in a way that meant they didn't really interact with other cards of the magic and didn't become busted down the line. A non-parasitic design would be Lion's Eye Diamond, a card that was shit at the 
time, but as it like got involved with the greater tapestry of magic, became incredibly broken and expensive. To avoid it this time round, some cards are just generically good. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, for example, is just generically way too good. Go Shintai just does stuff with enchantments, making them a reasonable five color enchantress commander if that's what you're into. How exciting, said the simpletons across the multiverse. Do you know how legendary creatures are pushed to shit now? Power crept so hard it makes your nipples chafe? Legendary used to be a drawback, and now it's just a signifier. A shorthand in language to tell us the audience that this card is designed and pushed to be someone's favorite niche or not so niche commander. Now imagine if all of that was jammed into one place, like right up inside you. If all that power creep was crammed into one place, it's this deck. This guy allows us to buff creatures and cast free spells from our library too when we cast our legendary creatures. Yep, yeah, that's just Joda, really. It doesn't do anything besides just buff and free spell. Maybe I'm just traumatized from playing against this dickhead in Historic Wall, but did Joda really need both abilities? Do you need to buff your creatures and give you free spells? He'd probably be pretty strong with just one of those, especially the second ability. But lo and behold, the year of our Lord 2024, commanders need to do a lot now to even get a look at. This wall of text roughly translates for get ready for some complete and utter bullshit. Gishath gets a new lease of life after his 2017 release, with wizards returning to the popular well of LOL dinosaurs. Magic players are honestly the most sophisticated of the big three card games players, or at least they claim as they turn their dinosaurs sideways on top of their anime titty playmat. I'm surprised Gishath didn't get a new version, but I guess Gishath is hard to top, both in a card design way and a sexual way. A damage trigger that puts a load of dinos into play off the top of your library is something that any other creature type will clamor to have on a commander that has both trample, vigilance, and haste. Absolutely fucking shocked this wasn't power crept, instead just getting a straight up reprint into caverns. There's not much more to say about it other than it's big, it's dumb, and I'm sure you can come up with your own joke about cum. Oh behave. Shurikai Genesis Engine. I'm shocked this is as popular as it is, although it was a pre-con commander to get a boost with all the content surrounding them, so maybe that's why it's so popular. It's a big dumb rock that lets you look to untap a few times through untapping effects and make a load of crew, then suit up like Power Rangers. Whilst the deck does tend to play a bit of control where it's a card draw engine to, you know, fill out your hand, draw two, discard one, make a body, all that jazz, I don't think that's a reason to hate on it. I think blue-white control is something that a lot of new players hate from playing against it in 1v1 on the permission-based side of things, but a lot like Mail doesn't translate that well to a 100 card multiplayer, multiple hands to beat. One for wanting a counter spell into your spell is not good in Commander. But alas, some people still get upset when someone counter spells. To those people I say, get good, you fucking scrub. Shurikai is a cool Power Ranger themed design that I struggle to get upset about. I guess in the interest of roasting, the people playing this are probably anime nerds who think they're smarter than the average green player because they're playing blue. So essentially they're Krim. Love you, buddy. Krinko is a comfort blanket. It's the straightforward, it's linear, it's kind of fucking boring, but at least you know the game will be quick. Krinko scores binary points for letting us all shed that metaphorical mortal coil that little bit quicker so we can all fucking go home. Commander games take too long and none of us like each other anyway. So want to unload a bucket full of goblins and ask your opponent to deal with it. If they can't, GG, it's time to head to the kebab shop, buy a chicken wrap, and go home in time for an early night because my back hurts. From your TikTok pilled short attention span right through to you old fellows who can't hold their bladders like me. You can be home, piss covered in time for bed by 10. It's been the best part of half a decade and this twat still comes out on top. Perhaps testament how pushed the aristocratic wanker is. No other vampire commander has come even remotely close. Eminence was a mistake. Look, a huge, glaring mistake. Eminence is the design equivalent of a drunken Donna kebab. It feels like a great idea at the time and it scratches an itch. And you're loving life, lapping up at that greasy, greasy meat. But come morning, you're drier than a nun's cunt and all you can taste is nondescript meat. You feel gross. You're ashamed of yourself. You hovel in fear at the bottom of the shower, hoping with fresh water will cleanse your debased soul. But the worst part is you know you'll be back. You'll be reaching for your grease-filled meat pitter or your vampire tokens before you know it to fulfill a part of your soul that is empty. It is hollow. You are a husk. In a moment of weakness, you have relapsed and you're playing Edgar Markov just like you're walking into Charcoal Grill in Andover Town Centre, even though last time you ate one of their kebabs, you ended up shitting blood. You need that meat. And the cars, I guess. Wait, this is the most popular zombie commander? This Magic Mike Extra at least shares a creature type with some of them, unlike Gissa or similar. But the fact that Timothy Chalamet over here sees more play than Grimgrin is crazy to me. You'd rather play with a sexy, muscular zombie man over my zombie Hulk? Oh, it's a sex thing. Kenneth still lives. As a popular commander, he is the home for all the Golos refugees, and thus most of the decks playing him at the helm were a pile of uninspired good stuff decks. They are semi-competent middle management. 
they are beige, if beige was a magic deck. They are administrative tasks in MTG form, a necessity towards success but you don't want to play with them. Kenrith is a five colour king of Disneyland and somehow wizards made him boring. That should be a crime. Oh, it's time for the CDH players to arrive. What more is there to say about Eureka? Once upon a time I thought ninjas were cool. Then I grew up and became an adult. I got a job. The job is making videos about card games on the internet and I still feel like I'm too mature for this Eureka shit. That's when you know it's truly embarrassing. Much has been written about Eureka already that I won't reiterate, probably including some rather suspect fan fiction. She sees play in CDH where she gets a pass because everyone is a saint when in the shadow of Winota. I like the design but she's so efficient and good at what she does she pushes out Jan Commanders which I think is overall bad for the game. If you play Eureka you should feel bad. This next commander I've never played against. I'm gonna be real with you, I don't know how I've never seen this card. If it's supposedly one of the most popular commanders in all of Commanderdom, and I've travelled around the world and to magic cons on multiple continents to play Magic the Gathering, and I've yet to have anyone sit down and pull this out of a deck box and put it on a table to play against me, I feel this is some sort of big inside joke. This is my Bernstein Bears. This is Spider-Man without the hyphen. I don't think Ishin exists, and therefore I'm going to ignore him. Ishin does not exist. No. How have I never seen this card before? It's so strange. Elves are the missionary position of type or payoffs. It's blue denim jeans and a black tee. It's vanilla ice cream in a world of Ben and Jerry's. It's margarita pizza but you ask for no cheese. It's sex with the lights off. It's masturbating without the handful of fruit that you're used to. Friends don't let friends do elves. Especially with this shit. This green black elf commander that showed up, pulled Azuri's pants down on stage and embarrassed him so hard that he left the top 50 commander decks forever. Never to return because everyone saw what I assume is quite a presumably very pretty elven penis. Azuri is embarrassed. And last time I did one of these three years ago, Azuri was the de facto go-to best commander. How times have changed. Lathril makes elves, then much like the rest of this list, drains my will to live. But also in the literal sense of draining my life. This fucking guy. A casual rug, six mana commander with evasion and a little bit of everyone's favourite new mechanic strapped on, Ward 2. It's like Hexproof but it's worse, both in the sense that it's uh, not as good as Hexproof, but it's way more readily used by Wizards of the Coast to push obnoxious cards to be that ever little bit better. This thing is a copy of every dragon that enters the battlefield and stops them being legendary to allow for some complete nonsense and it would be good enough if it didn't also just have wards strapped on too to make sure that it's more playable than other dragon commanders. My problem with ward is that it's used just to make things more desirable and playable. Day old plate of nondescript meat, ward one. Gwyneth Paltrow's Jade Fanny Egg, Ward 2. A dog shit left in the sun, Ward 3. On top of that, I've lost this fucking card limited three times because it's quite good when you draft a three color commander that can double up your uncommon dragons in Battle for Baldur's Gate. I just have a whole dislike for the vibe of this card, including how it's climbing down those books. That looks like it hurt your back. Funnily enough, the original roast had Erdragon's more respectable and less powerful cousin. Now, Erdragon, complete with eminent stabilizing wheels for those of us unable to tie our own shoelaces, was released in Commander 2017. So how was it that the sign of the Ur Dragon made it onto my original list three years ago? Did I download the wrong image and talk about the wrong five color commander and not a single person in the comment section noticed and I didn't notice until literally writing up this video? Is that what happened? Well yeah actually and that's probably more interesting than this commander because it's fucking boring. Atrax is a really exciting and varied commander. It allows you to play different things like in fact or planeswalkers or in fact and planeswalkers. She's so fucking boring in fact that she was on the original list and the joke I just told was a literal approximation with less energy put into it of a joke from the old video. I didn't even want to write new stuff about her because I just do not care about her enough. I'm so bored of Atraxa at this point. Ironically, we're about to go into the golden age of Atraxa, where players can use things like uh, radiation and energy with two different energy precons coming out, one already before this video, one after with Modern Rises 3. So you have a different way to play her, or should we say people will play Infect or Planeswalkers and sprinkle a bit of this shit in. In spite of a golden age, I'd rather lick a turd than play with Atraxa. That's not true. I'd much rather you play Atraxa against me than I lick a dog shit. I'll be honest. And that's it. That was the 20 most popular commanders due in part to the, and not in part, due entirely to the number that were submitted to EDH Rank over the last 24 months. Some of these are obviously not as big as the others because they would have been big, I don't know, a year or so ago. If this video does well and you enjoyed it, I'll do more. I'll do the most popular last week. I'll do the next 20. Hell, I'll do 30 in one go. Ooh. Either way, if you enjoy it, let me know in the comment section below. Tell me my Discord. Sign up for my Patreon. Link down below. I'll 
below and just let me know you enjoy the content because the more you feed back that you like the shit, the more I can tell and make what I'm making to do the stuff that's popular and exciting. Also, I do have fun just being really mean to mythical dragons and elves. It's cathartic, you know? I've been Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one, you fuckhead. Ta-ta for now.